Mr. Tom McManus, how are you? Tom, great to be here. No kidding. What a small world you and I live in. It is. It is. Four yeah. time zones away, but no 300 of the same people. Exactly. Yeah, man. yeah, 300 of the same people, all because we get out there and meet guys like us to talk about things we talk about. Exactly. Uh, hey, thanks for joining us here on the show, Cabinet Maker Profit System. Pretty specific title, isn't it? It is. Yeah. It's riches and niches. Riches in the niches. That's right. And in this niche, they might be saying, well, who's Tom McManus? Why do I care? And uh, what's this guy doing talking to us? Tom, can you tell us a bit about yourself? Yeah. So I'm the CEO of a company called Kegworks. So Kegworks, we're based in Buffalo, New York. We've been in business for 23 years and we sell everything you find in a bar except the alcohol. Well, you got everybody's attention right there. I think Kegworks probably gave it away. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty pretty good specialty. Our tagline is tools for drinking. And everyone <laughs> smiles when I tell them what our tagline is. I saw on your website, tiki to- like you have a tiki torch section. Yeah, we do uh, tiki glasses. That whole niche is a huge, uh, a huge area for us. Too. I wonder how many parrot heads are listening to this show right now. In this industry, you would be shocked. Shocked and amazed. Yeah. Well, the parrot heads are now listening even care more closely going. <laughs> yeah. Tom's here. Yeah. So, so okay. we sell draft beer dispensing or draft beer dispensing equipment. So yeah. equipment that gets the, the beer from the keg to the glass. Yeah. Bar tools and accessories. Yeah. So mixers, shakers, that type of stuff. Premium cocktail ingredients. So all the stuff that you need to make that badass Manhattan. Uh, we have the largest selection of bitters anywhere on the internet, high-end tonic waters. Yeah, we can do that. We can do this for hours. But the reason that I'm here to talk to you and your crew is because we are the leader in bar rails. So if you've been into a bar that's been built in the last seven or eight years, anywhere in the United States and good chunks of Canada, if there's a bar rail on it, there's a pretty good chance we were involved with that project. I love it. And, it, and you know, that's, it's amazing that people think COVID has slowed everything down, but we're busy. And I know restaurants are taking an impact, but the reason I have you here today, the reason I hunted you down and Tom, I went to find you, mm-hmm. you know, a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend and somebody got me in touch with you and you know who we're talking about there yep. is because of COVID and the changes it's going to have on design, build of bars and restaurants, to some extent cafes, but if they're serving alcohol, that's a place that, that you have an impact. And a lot of our listeners, guys we're talking to right now are building those places. So I'm, I'm so happy yep. to have you here to give us the inside scoop. Yeah. So it's been really kind of fascinating to watch. Um, so we thought we were just going to get crushed when everything started shutting down. Yeah. Uncertainty, it, would, right? it was, you know, and entrepreneurs find a way. And what, what we found was, you know, they were doing anything to hang on to their crews. Like, so, are you talking about construction crews or restaurants? Construction crews. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so they were taking on a lot of those little projects that really weren't worth their time when things were going crazy. So a lot of super small projects that were just filling the day to get them through to their PPP loans or whatever. And yeah. just to keep the guys working as best they can until things. So we really didn't slow down. A lot of the home bar projects came up. And so these, these tiny little retro. Like man cave things, stuff. Man caves. Yeah. 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 Some of our customers have the most, you know, have the most amazing offices. Yeah. But, you know, you got talented woodworkers. You got to see their bars. Um, so it's it's fantastic to see what people did to keep busy and the way they transitioned. And what was great was a lot of them got to scoping. A lot of them got to working on their business instead of in their business. And what are we going to do next? And how do we build that pipeline? Because this isn't forever. There's too much cheap money. The bar, you know, the bars are going to come back. The restaurants are going to come back. And we need the socialization. We need to get out and see people. And, I mean, people are in bars and restaurants right now. Like, mm-hmm. Let's just call it in general, there's rolling blackouts, depending on the state, depending on it's the county, enough. depending on the province, for sure. But it's going to come back, and, and it's coming back in some places. So this is where people are 
uh, you and I were talking about this. There's a different use of space in a bar now. Right, right. So, and, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, so the first thing that we saw was the, the amazing creativity in the partition design. Mm. So from PVC and plastic to different wood to the um, integration of composites with plexiglass. Um, the Barriers, you mean, bar we've had specialists on here who did sneeze guards. Yeah. They're, you know, yeah. the, the, the non-technical term, they are doing knockdown yeah. sneeze guards and selling them on Etsy. And that carried their business through that little lull that we had there. Mark right. April, so, yeah. So the movable partitions. So it's the partition that isn't permanent, but mm -hmm. gets them through the different phases of compliance. Now I'm in New York state. So compliance is, you talk about a rolling blackout. Yeah. Try to hit a, the, the compliance guidelines in New York state are the biggest moving targets that are out there right now. So what we're finding is these movable partitions yeah. um, to do that in a thousand different designs or whatever to keep you in compliance. What we also found as a longer term trend is the use of bar service rails as a permanent space separator on the bar. So okay, bar hold on, just, yep. just for, I, I'm, maybe I'm the only guy that doesn't get it, but can you define, because I'm, I'm, I'm not the smartest, you know, knife in the door. Yeah, that's nodding. what our friend told Tragically, us. you're nodding. For those of you who can't see this, this is a, a video on YouTube and, and we're doing it as the audio for the podcast. What's a bar service rail? So a bar service rail is that candy cane shaped uh, piece of rail. It's either, it either goes all the way down to the floor or it loops around from the top of the bar to the face of the bar. Yeah. It usually separates where the bar staff goes to the bar to pick up drinks for the rest of the restaurant. Right. Okay. So what we're seeing is, you know, on most standard bar designs, you'll see two, sometimes three of those bar service rooms, just as, a, as some type of demarcation line for the staff to the patron. Right. Give the waitress her space or to have the glass washer or whatever that area exactly. is. Exactly. Right? The buster can come back and forth. The food yeah. can get to the bar. We're seeing people use those now permanent. Oh, as, stacking them up every X feet apart. Exactly. Right. So going down that, okay, we don't know what this is going to mean, but it's our interpretation that people are going to come back and there's still going to be a little bit of uncertainty in the psychology of the patron mm. that they're going to want a permanent space clearance on that bar. So Interesting. To the point where we bought a piece of equipment to keep up with the demand. Uh, a piece of, oh, what, oh well, you're talking to equipment guys here. What kind of equipment did you buy? Now everybody else uh, wants it too. Yeah, it's a, uh, a tube bender. Oh, that's okay. Used, that's used, um, the primary application for this thing's in muffler shops. So the one we bought, it allows us to build that tight radius. To, without crimping. Without crimping. Without right. crimping, yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so that's the first trend. The second yeah. trend we're, we're seeing is in the bar surface. Okay. Where to I put my drinks, where I put my elbows, that stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Um, the kind of the poured concrete was a big trend and we were seeing all sorts of other new surfaces come back. The non-porous, um, super smooth, um, easy to clean has been the biggest thing right now. Well, so probably it also has to look clean, not just be clean, but it has, to, I have to be able to think it's clean. You know what I mean? As a, as a bar like, patron. Uh, yeah. The psychology of the patron is right. coming, coming in a lot. So we're seeing that um, the trends were going away from stainless steel, just the design elements. The trends were going away from it. We're seeing it come back because. Well, of, yeah. Cause the cleanliness, the cleanliness factor. Yeah. So having stainless start to come back, um, easy to maintain. And the other trend that we're seeing right now in regards to COVID is the utilization of the bar top. Um, so cool. it used to, the bar top and the drink rail, which is that four to six inch kind of channel on the bartender side of the bar. 
Yeah. Okay. There used to be in front of that, between the drink rail and the patron, there would be condiment trays. There would be right bitters everywhere. Stir you know, sticks and stuff like that. Stir yeah. sticks, napkins, that that type of stuff. So now we're seeing that stuff all slide backwards behind the bar. So mm-hmm. workspaces being set up for cocktail creation on um, on the bar side of the bar instead of actually using the bar top as that. Is that to create a le- cleaner line of sight or for the, so there's no cross contamination, extra people touching things? Number one. Number two, it's a pain in the butt to move all those bottles to wipe down the surface. I have a question though. Yeah. How am I going to steal my olives now? Well, I think that. Because I'm a, I'm, I'm like, I've been caught a bunch of times taking extra uh, olives off the bar top. Yeah. Yeah. You know what, Dom, I'm going to tell you, bartenders hate you. Yeah, I will. (laughs) Reason number one. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So the, the, the cross contamination is a huge thing. Right. Um, sliding that stuff back because we were actually in the process of, we were calling them bitter corrals that we were building that were a tiny. Of a marketing name, a bitter corral. Yeah. So it was a tiny little, it, it looked like a uh, partition, a, um, a booth partition yeah. with a, you know, a half inch rail. So, yeah. And that would just set on and they would keep all the bitters inside of that on the bar top, you know, because showing the number of ingredients you had was a marketing. For sure. Especially in these cocktail bars where they're making really nice mixed drinks. Yeah. Really nice mixed drinks. You want to see the wide variety the, it's the spice rack for your bar to yeah. credit my friend, Joe, late Joe fee. Um, and what happened was though they'd slide, they'd move. And then we had these corrals. Well, now that whole thing, we stopped that because all that stuff has been moved behind the bar. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you can clean it. And so there's less and less stuff on the actual bar surface right now. I have a question. How much do you get called in on bar design questions? You know, most of our specialty is the bar face and the foot rail for when we're getting called in on that. You were making fun of me for having a show called Cabinet Maker Profit System, and that's your niche? (laughs) Yeah. Well, you know, uh, we both do okay. Um, So the um, we get a little bit on this, but we're more of a a resource for the designers. Like, hey, can we do this? Um, We can do it. But I'm learning it. I'm learning a ton about the implication of the build from you. Because I'm thinking about the build side from the architecture mill worker who's doing that restaurant, that bar, even cafes. There's mm-hmm. a lot of those those design elements carry over for all those applications, right? Right. The design elements carry over because, you know, we've all been um, job projects that look fantastic to the designer uh, until someone's actually got to work in that space. <laughs> and, and all the design elements get thrown out the window to actually turn it into a functional workspace. Yeah. Yeah. So this is kind of the, the things that we're seeing. And the other thing that we're seeing too, um, from a cleanliness point of view, is the modification of the drink rail itself, that four to six inch channel we were talking about. Mm-hmm. So in the past, that was meant it to be kind of a, a spill area. Oh, yeah. So, I've cleaned yeah. under those things for years. It's not. A, oh, yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. Yeah. It's disgusting. You know there's disgusting those, is the word. Disgusting yeah, is the word. Yeah. Those knobby bar mats yeah. that were in the workspace, you know, you'd pour your shot, you'd mix it, you you turn it upside down, you keep your shaker there. Yeah. Yeah. That just kept everything from rolling to the bar, getting the bartender all wet. So now the next trend was what was called a scupper rail, yeah. which was that stainless steel insert that was put inside that rail. Right. Now they've modified, and like you and I were talking, there was still that little seam, and there was still stuff that got inside oh, behind yeah. the scupper rail. And you thought it was gross underneath the bar, the bar mat. Lift a scupper if you can even get it off. Bring a screwdriver because that's the only way you're unsticking these things. Usually, I know it's gross. Yeah, yeah. The cordial gets in there and it dry. Whatever it is, right? The sugars and everything. Oh yeah, well, yeah. welds it together. Maraschino, maraschino cherry juice. 
Yeah. <laughs> Might as well be Gorilla Glue. Um, so we're seeing the trend where the design is, is gone from the insert to either an angle or it comes all the way around the lip of the bar top. Oh, so you you can uh Which just seals it. No, right. it actually, it seals it. Oh, it seals completely. So it's a closed seals. system. Closed system. No. Okay. Yeah. So now toward the bartender, it all the way goes down and wraps around the back side mm -hmm. of the non-patron side of the bar. Right. From a cleanliness point of view too. And we're seeing that as a huge trend in the, in the change of that. And we do do a lot of helping people design those and find and build those out. So let's talk about the front side of the bar. I understand you are moving pallets. These are normal size pallets, right? We're not yes. talking about yes. but pallets of something that I would not have even considered. And that's definitely a design trend. This, this audience has to hear what, tell us more about that. So what we've done is like I said, we've been known for mm -hmm. the bar rail. Okay. The two inch, the two inch tube that you put your feet on. We have all these different designs and, and the, ch even the changes in the bar rail design over the last few years. Right. When I started in this business, everything was brass. Everything looked like cheers. Okay. And then everything went. <laughs> and so we're we talking about the rail that my feet go on, right? That brass rail. Yep. So serious question here, technical question. Yep. Tom, here comes my technical question voice. That horizontal brass rail, mm -hmm. can it be installed vertically? It can. What we are the can. applications for a vertically installed brass rail? So well, one potential application is I'm a loving firehouse. This. Is a what? A firehouse. A firehouse. Yes, you're right. That's firehouse. absolutely correct. So a fire pole for getting from upstairs to downstairs quickly. Yes. Yes. Okay, so that's what we're talking about here. Using your same pole nomenclature. Right. Um, there may be an exercise trend. Uh -huh. um, of like fitness based. Fitness based for pole right. dancing. Okay. And I, I do recall that there's some famous institutions in your neck of the woods that may have some other dancing applications. Um, we do sell a fair number of those poles, not the part of my business I tell my mother about, but sure, yes. Sure. Hey, it's an, it's an architectural installation that we should definitely do more research on. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, thank you. Sorry. Back to serious matters, but serious I, I'm glad matters. that you're the supplier. You're the guy who supplies those. Yes. Yes. Okay. Good. Uh, it's always interesting to hear, walk by a customer service call on one of those poles. <laughs> too. Um, so um, the bar rail. Um, the different finishes, you know, when I started, everything was polished brass. It went to stainless. Now it is um, matte black. is super, super po popular. Really? So the powder coated finishes. Yeah. Um, the oil rub bronze um, in, in the powder coat. Um, but now we're seeing things, you know, it's been 20 something years. Now we're circling back. So brass is, brass is hot again. And it's antiqued, yeah. Um, or it is um, a satin finish, uh, or a brushed finish on the bar, on the bar rail. Right, um, and it goes with the whole scheme of the design intent of this yep. restaurant bar. Yep. Effect, right. Yeah. The whole uh, what we're seeing is the end of the um, reclaimed wood, um, Edison light, um, black pipe. Yeah. kind of trend and everything it's it's getting a little uh, i don't want to say cleaner but it's just going away from that that trend that was it. it has to look cleaner yep it has yep. to be an inviting environment where i trust that everything else is clean you know you've you've probably heard this analogy or maybe lived it but if i go into a chinese restaurant and the bathroom's dirty i know what the kitchen looks like mm -hmm. and i'm sorry to say chinese restaurant because the best chinese restaurants have horrible bathrooms and i still eat there you know, I, I used to have a company that sold uh, retractable belt stanchions, the things that put you in line at the movie okay. theater or the yeah. bank and that. And I used to drive my wife insane. We'd walk into and we'd be in a queue for something. I'm like, we're leaving. She, what do you mean we're leaving? I go, look at this crap post. I'm like, if they're cutting costs here, you imagine what they're doing in the kitchen? We're out. She's like, you? she's like, why do I even go out with you? I'm like, you had a stanchion business. 
Yeah, I was in the stands. Oh, yeah, you love the niches. You look for the corners of the market, mm -hmm. don't you? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so um, with that being said, what we were talking about on the pallets that we sell pallets of is because we sell so many foot rails, the design element on the front of the bar of a purse hook. That a matches purse hook. Purse hook. Wow. Um, so, you know, they're – the Kate Spade, the Louis Vuittons, all those, they're not putting them on the floor. No, so and they can't put them on the bar. Can't put them on the bar anymore. Um, so having that hook right, where that attaches to the front, the front of the bar matches the foot rail, tiny little design element. And you're talking a $200 investment to do the whole bar and changes the perception the customer perception of the bar. The, those those hooks are that cheap that the two hundred dollars is. Yeah, we'll you do can a bar. Put, Yeah, yeah, they're you know seven or eight bucks. Yeah, you can hold great. Them. Yeah, but you have uh -huh. to have them. You have to have them, and I'm sure they're going to be, you know, bylaw enforced because where I hope it. Good Lord, <laughs> will make it regulated. <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> All right, um, we know where you're coming from. So um, that would be the other thing. And the other thing that we're seeing too mm -hmm. on the front of the bar is power. 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 Outlets. And even more importantly, outlets with USB. And it's the, it's the, it, it's the awful trend of people on their phone at the bar. I, you see, I'm surprised by that because I would think, you know, you've walked into coffee shops and say, we don't have Wi-Fi because they don't want people sitting there for two hours. Mm -hmm. But now they've got, you can plug in your laptop and work at the bar? More plug in your phone and charge your phone. Yeah, wow. Second second biggest complaint that I hear from bartenders, besides guys stealing the olives off the front of the bar. Those guys are the worst. <laughs> is, hey, can I, can you charge my phone? Right, yeah, and it's a waste of time. Although you, uh, you do tip the guy, you should tip the guy for that. You charge. should tip the guy. Yeah. But the guy that doesn't that shows up without his phone charged without a battery backup is probably not the guy that's doing the tipping. Yeah. Um, so what we've seen is number one, having power in the front of the bar. Yeah. Hey, can you charge my phone? Look in the front of the bar. Oh, that's great. There's a plug there. Oh, I didn't bring my charger. Well, I can sell you a USB cord for three bucks. And they buy okay. the cheap. Increasing cheap. the average dollar sale. They buy the cheap ones and resell them. Yep. And chances are they'll no oh, can i just you no that, that's we here and you can keep it yeah. you know it's the it's the new pickled egg it's the it's the headphones on the airplane exactly yeah exactly. what a great great idea yes. i'm hoping that listeners here are taking away a lot of not only design elements but ways to add value when they're having the discussion with the gc or the builder or maybe the mm -hmm. you know even the project manager on a job for change orders for things to add value to existing jobs yep. if these get overlooked in the original you know, architectural uh, mm -hmm. specs. Yep. Um, the last thing that we've seen, um, but I got another, I got another bonus yep. to, based on what you just said. The last one that we're seeing a lot mm -hmm. of is the installation of tape LEDs underneath the front of the bar. And because they've gotten so inexpensive, they're so easy to use, so easy to install. Right. And the flexibility of being able to change colors. You know, my favorite holiday is in a month, less than a would, month. Would that be St. Patrick's Day? My name is McManus. What do you think? <laughs> I got engaged. Hey, listen, St. Patrick's, Patrick's Day was the last time I left town. It was last March. Mm -hmm. I was in Boston, the, the homeland of your people. <laughs> Were you at the Dropkick Murphys concert? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Um, so the... Um, the ability to change colors, a little bit of design flexibility, super easy to add right. on. Add themes and, or, right. Yep. And um, the last bonus one that you made me just think of as the, a question to ask that's easily done, especially by your, cust your listeners, my customers, yeah. is, the bar is the bottle steps. Or the bottle what? shelves behind the bar. Oh, okay. Okay. So yeah. a lot of times it's an afterthought to it. Um, if you can get the bottle shelves 
built into the original design and then build the lighting around it. There's Already. studies that show if the top shelf is lit, especially from the bottom, yeah, your average ticket on those will go up. On mixed cocktails. So you're lighting the bottles. So I you're see the light, amber of the rye yeah. and the, the clearness yeah. of the vodka. And the... Yeah. And so you want your top shelf to be the brightest. Neat. Yep. So if you can incorporate the lighting and the, the built-in bar bottle shelves, huge thing too. And the only reason I know this is because I get a lot of after the fact, oh, I need bottle shelves. Do you have lit ones? Yeah, we have them. No problem. Um, but they're nowhere near what the, the millworks can do with those bottle shelves. Right. It's, it sounds to me, and I, 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 I'm going to ask if you're open to this, but if you've got a cabinet maker, architecture mill worker, most likely, who's in front of a, a bar design and they've got some questions, are you open to people contacting you and finding out your yeah, insight? Ab absolutely. So I have a whole sales team. Uh, Mick Whipple leads our sales team. We have uh, three, hopefully hiring a fourth um, account executive and that's wow. all they do is deal with millworks and contractors and interior designers on helping them spec estimate and get you know get this component of the bar done and awesome leverage our hundreds upon hundreds of projects that we do every year yeah. over the last 15 years um, to, to do things like that you know, it's yeah. our job to make their job easier. Well, and you guys have lots of, lots of insight. I, you know, the, as you and I were prepping for this, we were going to talk about bar rails, under bar purse hooks, under bar power with USB, under bar tape lights, movable dividers, the maintenance, you know, keeping it clean and looking clean and then drink rails. You also might have some insights into uh, firehouse poles. Firehouse poles. Yes. So is that what we're going to call them so that people driving with their kids in the car would understand yes. that firemen are important and we need yes. to support them yes. wherever we can. First responders. My son's a first responder. Oh, great. Yeah. yeah. In Buffalo. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He's oh. uh, he's an EMT and an ambulance. So nice. Um, so yeah. So first responders are very close to our hearts. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, I think that there's probably been more value in this interview than I thought there was going to, I uh, know, no offense, Bob. <laughs> you sound like my wife. <laughs> there's no stanchions here. We're out of here. Right. Um, no, but it, it's, it, it, the little things that you gave as examples for increasing the value of a piece of installed architecture, which is, you know, the underbar lighting, those are the kinds of things that make our listeners sound intelligent about the application and when they go in and talk to the project manager or the GC about the project, they can add value just by having those little comments and understandings, even if they've never built right. a restaurant or a bar before, or a cafe yeah. you know, before, right? Yeah. I imagine yeah. the same thing would happen if I had a lineup of Tarani coffee syrups. It's the same application. It's just not booze. It's coffee right. syrup, right? Right. And we've done a lot, you know, with our beverage experience, um, on the beer side, we've done a lot of work in cold brew coffee systems. Um, you know, we've actually, we've actually helped somebody put ketchup on tap once. Okay. Don't and me, why not? Yeah. It is not mine to question why. It is just to make it happen. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Uh, Tom, Tom, if somebody wants to get in touch with you at Kegworks, if they want to find out more about Tiki bars or any of these applications, how would they find you? So start with our website is www.kegworks, K-E-G-W-O-R-K-S.com. Um, our full, uh, uh, you know, our full 6,000 products are available there. Um, for this audience specifically, um, what I'd like them to do, go to kegworks.com slash bar rail sample. Mm -hmm. B-A-R-R-A-I-L-S-A-M-P-L-E, bar rail sample. And they can order these. I'm going to show you this work on video, but not on, um, not on your li listener per se. But we have these sample chips we just built. Oh, and okay. they're laser cut. They're laser cut um, nice. that show all the different finishes we have, the thickness, 
Um, they come in a, they come in this ring. Okay. So okay. they're design room fret friendly. Um, they can take them out to the customers. They can present them in front of the, their customers, make it easier. They can see the heft that these things are made with, get the colors exactly what they want. And it, it's a good starting point of a conversation. And if it's not what they want on these, we can custom do anything. I, I was surprised when I looked at your website, by the way, what are, what do you call the 90 degree turn that's made out of solid wood? What's the technical name for those? It goes um, to the edge of the bar that I'm leaning against and it's going oh, around arm, a corner. The arm rails. The arm rails. Arm rails. Yeah. I mean, those are pre, you guys pre-make those. So those are ready to go. Yep. Yep. So the turns, turns are already there. You know, mm -hmm. these, these guys are pretty capable of making joints. Um, but we do have them already pre-cut in a, a number of different wood finish it, wood that they can just order or ship right to the job site. Well, and sometimes that's a better way to go if, uh, you know, a hundred reasons. Yep. Tom, this has been great. Very interesting, very insightful. And Thanks, it, it, yeah, well, and especially with in light of COVID, it's going to cause changes on the, on the design side for, you know, keeping the public safe. And the more that we can do to help that, then we're all getting back to work, all of us. Exactly. The more flexibility we can build into these spaces, the more we can accommodate this moving target of, the, of what's regarded for compliance. And eventually we'll get back to sitting on each other's laps in these bars. But, you know, and, and the food prices won't, the food and drink prices won't go back down. So, yeah. yeah, you know, but let's help our customers get the most out of that dollar per square foot that they need. Yeah. To keep this going. Bob, thanks for joining us. I look forward to maybe having you back in the future soon. I can't wait. All right. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Tom. All right. Bye.